Hey there my gorgeous friends on the internet and welcome to the 3JS Crash Course. Hope you're hungry for it. Yoshi? So I really wanted to do a 3JS Crash Course because it's so hard to find something that actually looks really nice there online that teaches you from complete scratch. So I'm going to take you from complete scratch learning everything about cameras, scenes and everything that's involved in 3JS and we're going to create this beautiful ball that you can add to your portfolio. So let's without further ado, let's get going. I'm going to go out with the dog as well because it's winter time, bitch. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get going. Really excited about this one. Um, yeah, we're gonna start com completely from scratch. So let's get going. I just have an empty main.js here. I have a style.css that's empty and an index.html that's also empty. I initialized this project with Vite or Vite, if you wanna say it like that. I have no idea how people say it. Uh, it's really simple. All you need to do is run this command npm create vite at latest. And that's it. Uh, it should give you this. So you're ready to go. Okay, so let's get exploring with 3.js. So first of all, what we need to do is do npm install 3 and gsap. All right, these are the two packages that we're going to use. So install these two and then we're good to go. And then you can do npm run dev. And here we go. It's going to give you a server and click on this. And there we go. Cool. We have a white screen. Fantastic. Um, and you're, you're probably going to have like a default screen here after you create your Vite project. Um, but just delete everything from your style.css, your main.js, and index.html. All right. So get rid of everything and then we are good to go. All right, so let's get going with 3.js. How do we do? What do we do? Well, let's import it first. We're going to say import everything as tree from tree. All right, cool. So how, what do we need to do first? Well, we need to set up a scene and you can imagine a scene like a movie set, right? Where you have cameras there, you have lights and you have your actors and your, yeah, your background and whatnot. Let's create it. How do we create it? Scene. All you do is say con scene equals to new tree dot scene like that. All right. And now whenever we create an object like a sphere or whatnot, we need to add it to the scene. How do we create a sphere? Well, tree.js gives you a lot of default shapes included in the package in the library. So if you want a box, you can get a box super easily. If you want a uh, pff, what is a ring you can get a ring and you can also customize these further on so if I go on let's go on the torus for example here it is I can increase the radius of it like that to kind of customize it further the tube so there we go it kind of looks like a donut now all right but again remember these are quite like basic shapes that 3GS gives you if you want to do anything more complex than that if you want to add a car a controller PlayStation controller, you're better off going into Blender and modeling it yourself and then import it into 3JS. But for this example, we are going to stick to the sphere. So let's find it here. Sphere geometry. All right. So this is the geometry here. So const geometry equals to new tree dot sphere geometry. And this takes in a couple of parameters. I'm going to say tree, 64, and 64. So what are these? Um, I can show you right here. So tree is the radius, basically how big it is. If I go down like that, boof, that's 28. That's one. All right. So that's the size. And then the 64 and 64 are the segments. So as you can see, we have width segments and height segments. So if I decrease that, you're going to see that with three segments, it kind of looks like that. And if we increase this, it just adds more complexity to it. So something like 64, 64 makes it look really smooth and just like a perfect ball. So that's why I use 64, 64 there. All right, cool. So we have our geometry. Now, geometry is just the shape of it, essentially, right? It still looks like, imagine you're working with clay. So this would be the geometry, but it doesn't have any 
color to it. It doesn't have any um, reflectiveness to it. All right, it doesn't look metallic. So that's the material. Geometry is just the shape and the material is how it looks like. So we can see new tree, mesh standard material. All right, we're gonna use this one again. There's quite a couple of them out there, but this is a standard one. And here, if we do an object, we can define things like color, so let's do that. We'll do a green one here. 0, 0, FF, A3. And then we can also define like roughness. I'm just gonna leave it like this because I, I want, want you to see it visually. And finally, we have a mesh. So mesh is basically the combination of geometry and material. So when you take geometry and the way it looks and combine it together, you have your mesh. So new, tree dot mesh all right and this takes in the geometry and the material so you're essentially combining them together to get your final mesh and remember what we need to do is add it to the scene so you can do that with scene dot add and then pass in the mesh okay cool we still cannot see anything unfortunately but don't worry we're gonna fix that in just a bit okay so we have a scene with a with a sphere in it. Now what we need to do is add a camera. And camera essentially is, um, yeah, just imagine again like a movie scene. Um, the thing that you're gonna see here on the, on the screen is what the camera is looking at. So let's do a camera here. And the way you do that is say new tree dot perspective camera. Again, there's quite a couple out there. This is the most popular one. Uh, there's orthographic and stuff like that, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple because this takes in quite a few parameters too So I need to explain all of them. So first of all is the f field of view. All right, so essentially how much can this camera see? So field of view, I think like 45 is a good value uh, I wouldn't go above 50 to be honest because what you end up getting is distortion on the sides. So distortion, let's search for that. Let me make this a bit bigger. Um, do you know what, like when you have like a fisheye camera that has like, uh, it's very wide. When, when you do the wide camera, it's gonna start distorting at the edges right there. Uh, here's a better example right there, see? I'm not sure if this is like a wide camera, but the wider the camera, focal length is usually the more distortion you get something like that so 50 is fine i feel like 50 looks pretty good and it doesn't distort that much at all anyway next up what we need to do is give it the aspect ratio of the camera so for this one uh let's just add 800 by 600 here but we're gonna update this and hit save okay so that's our camera and then we can do scene dot add camera and we still cannot see anything on the screen. So I know it's getting a bit annoying, but we'll fix it now. Okay, so we have our scene and we have a camera and we have a sphere in there. So we should be all ready to go. So finally, what we need to do is render this scene on the screen. How do we do that? Well, we're doing it with Canvas. So let's head to our index.html here and add a canvas and add a class to it. Let's do WebGL, all right, and hit save. So now with the tree JS renderer, we're gonna paint it on this canvas. So let's go down here and we're gonna say renderer. There we go, close that up. And what we're gonna do is say const canvas, we're gonna select it first. So document query selector, and we called it dot webgl. There we go. Okay, and then we need to define the renderer new tree webgl renderer. This is the one that you're pretty much going to use all the time. So webgl renderer like that. Make sure you spell this correctly. And then we just put in the canvas in there like that. All right. Hit save. Did we get anything? God damn it, not yet, but it's okay. Okay, 
So we got that going. Let's see what else do we need to do. We need to render it out. Um, let's call this renderer like that. Okay. Now what we need to do is define how big our canvas is and where to render this, this thing out. So we can do render dot set size, and I'm going to do the same 800 by 600 here. I hit save. Still cannot see anything. Don't worry. We're almost, almost there. Um, all we need to do is say render dot render. And I want to render out the scene and the camera like that. All right, so that's what you need to pass it in. The scene that we're looking at, because you can have multiple scenes, and the camera that we added to the scene. Okay, cool. So now I want to make a couple of changes. One, we cannot see the, the sphere, right? All we see a black screen and that's it. That's okay. What we're going to do, essentially what's happening now is we added the sphere and we added the camera, but they're on the same position, right? So they're pretty much on top of each other. So you cannot see the sphere. So what we're going to do is right here before, we're going to see camera position dot Z and move it back by 20. All right. Now, what does 20 mean here? And what does all of these numbers mean here? Because here we add a tree, right? For this, the radius, the size of it. Well, it can be anything you really want. Uh, it can be meters, it can be centimeters, it can be, yeah, pretty much whatever you want. Um, the way I like to do it is depending what I'm, I'm working with, right? If I'm doing a house, uh, I'm going to consider this meters. If I'm going to do, I don't know, a small item like a controller, I'm going to work in centimeters, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it doesn't matter too much for now. Okay. So why can we see anything? Come on, Ed. God damn it. Get something on the screen. Well, the problem is we don't have any lights. So let's set up a quick light here. I'm going to say light. We're going to do a quick point light. So we're going to say tree, new tree dot point light. All right. And this takes in a color because light also has color. So I'm going to do white and then I'm going to do one and 100. And then I'm going to explain what this means in just a bit. So there we go. At the end here, we're going to say scene dot add light. There we go. Cool. And then we're going to move it position dot set zero ten ten still cannot see anything on the screen here because I messed something up the aspect ratio here needs to be 800 divided by six just like that and there we go we have our ball showing up on the screen finally let's go okay cool so now we can see here that if we do the position here for the camera if I do 10 it basically gets bigger right we're basically heading towards um, the camera. Now, if I do five here, we can still see it, three, and it's gone, all right? So now what we can do is we can also adjust like the clipping point of, um, of the sphere and the camera. So basically, if I go four here, you can still see it, right? But when we hit three, we go inside the object, so it's gone. Um, so here, what you can do is add a near clipping point, so 0 0.1 and then 100 for the far clipping point like that. So basically, if we move the camera away, as you can see, it's 100 now. If I move more than 101 away, so 130, it should disappear. See, 110, gone. Uh, and that's because you can set the camera to basically not see any objects further than 100 and closer than 0 0.1. So that's just another property that you can add on the perspective camera. All right, but in, the, in our case, it doesn't matter too much. So we're going to keep it at 20. All right, cool. So there's our ball. 
Um, just to get back to the light as well here, um, this is basically an X, Y, and Z position for them. So if I do 10 here, as you can see, I'm moving it 10 to this side. Uh, minus 10 would move it this way. Y10 is going to move it up. Minus Y is going to move it down. And then the Z is going to move it in and outwards. But what I found to work nice on this one is, yeah, something like that. 0, 10, 10. I think that looks pretty good. And then the camera position should have 20. Okay, cool. So we have that going. Now what I want to do next is make this fit the whole screen. So let's go, let's just go up here somewhere, maybe here. And we're going to call sizes here. So what I want to do essentially is get the size of the viewport here, the height of it and the width of it. So even if we resize, it's going to take up all, this, all the available space. Okay, so let's do a, a variable here, just an object. And we're going to say width window.inner width. Cool. And the height is going to be window.inner height. And that's it. So now I can take the sizes here and just add it to our camera and we can add it to our render as well. So let's go here and change this to sizes dot width divided by sizes dot height. All right, and then for the size here for the render, we're gonna say sizes dot width and sizes dot height. And hit save and look at that. It takes up all the available space now. Now one other thing doesn't work is well, not that it doesn't work, but look, if I resize, it doesn't resize. If I refresh, that works, which is good. But there's extra white space around here, so I want to get rid of that. Now, I'm using Vite, 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 or whatever you want to call it. So in my style.css, if I just remove the margin and padding, I'll add box sizing as well, border box, it's not going to do anything. So make sure you go to the top here and import your styles like that dot slash style dot CSS. There we go. And that's going to apply it after. So that's great. Uh, one more thing is body HTML. We can do overflow Y X. Sorry, we can do hidden just like that. Cool. All right. So there we go. That looks pretty good. It's not here yet, but we're getting there, so that's good. Um, okay, let me make more space. We can head back to our main.js. Let's see what we should do next. Oh, let's do the resizing. So let's do it here. And we can do it actually at the bottom, bottom here. Resize. So all we need to do is add an event listener to the window and it's a resize event listener. And all we're gonna say here is, we're gonna update the sizes. So sizes.width equals to window.innerWidth. And sizes.height equals to window.innerHeight. Because remember, this code here runs every time I'm dragging the panel here, I'm making it bigger or smaller. So if I do a console log window dot inner height, inner, let's do inner width like that. I hit save. So if I inspect the element here and open up the console log, you're going to see every time I move this, it's going to start console logging this out. All right. So we're just making sure every time we resize, the sizes get updated as well. Does it work? Not yet but that's okay. So besides this, what else we need to do is to update our camera. So let's go down here and say update camera. So what we're going to do is say camera dot aspect. All right. That's how we do the aspect ratio sizes dot width divided by sizes dot height, kind of the same thing we did up here. Cool. 
Does that work? No, not yet. That's okay. Because what else we need to do is say render dot set size sizes dot width and sizes dot height. All right, so these are the two that we always need to update and make sure they are in sync. The camera and the renderer. Right here, we also set the size, and here is also where we set the size. So now, if look, it works. Look, I resize this and. It works. The problem is it squishes it down like that, right? But it's actually resizing it correctly. Like the actual canvas is changing its size. So that's good. So what we need to do to fix this issue is just on the camera, we can do dot update projection matrix. All right, like that. Now this still won't work because we're essentially rendering our scene out once and that's it. And then we're not touching it ever again. So then we're stretching it out and doing whatever with it. What we want to do is re-render the canvas. So what we need to do is make a loop like that. And I'm going to say render the render scene and camera right here. And then I'm going to say window the request animation frame and just add the loop in here so it keeps going on and on like that. All right, so now it's gonna re-render everything and look at that, it works perfectly fine. Now, if I don't have this here, let's get rid of that. As you can see, let's just do this actually, first of all. Let me comment this out. All right, so the renderer is gonna set the canvas size. So that's fine but it's getting distorted still. But once we bring back this update projection matrix and reset the aspect ratio, it's gonna work perfectly fine. Okay, so now that we have the loop going, that's cool. You can add a Wii animation here if you want. So since this is looping around, you can do something like uh, mesh dot uh, rotation, rotation. X, for example, and you can do plus equals 0 0.2, for example, and hit save. Uh, it's rotating, it's hard to see. Uh, maybe you could just like move the light around if you want. So let's do light dot rotation. Let's do X, Y, maybe. Let's see which one would actually give us a visual. Let me just do something else actually. Mesh dot uh, position dot X, for example. We can do plus equals 0 0.1. All right, so as you can see, boo, it just animates out like that. Woo, cool. All right, but we're just gonna leave this like this and we're gonna use GSAP. Because one thing about this is I, I can add plus equals 0 0.1 here and it goes like that. But if your computer is slower than mine, um, it's gonna animate slower. So basically, the way it's implemented here is it's gonna do basically depending how many frames you get per second. So if my computer can do 400 frames per second, it's gonna go real quick. quick. And if your computer can only do 50, it's gonna be much, much slower. And that's why you need something like Delta Time because no matter how good or bad your PC is, it's gonna animate at the same speed. But we're not gonna get into that because we are just gonna use GSAP, which already is gonna do it correctly for us. So don't worry about it. Anyway, next up, what I wanna do is add some controls so I can move this around. Um, so how do we do that? Let's go to the top and we're gonna import something called Orbit controls like that from and we need to navigate over to tree examples slash JSM slash controls slash orbit controls oh my gosh there we go all right so now that we have that let's go down somewhere maybe here right above our render and we're gonna say controls 
All right, so we're gonna say controls equals to new orbit controls. And this one takes in the camera and the canvas again. Okay, cool. Something's wrong. Cause it's erroring out, no, let's see. Canvas, okay, so we need to move this down because we're defining canvas here. So let's just move it. We can move it here to the bottom somewhere actually. Let's do it right here. Okay, cool. No errors. And look at that. Now if I grab and hold, I can move this around. How cool is that? Now what else I want to do is add a bit of dampening to it because when I let go, it just stops instantly. So what we can do here is say controls dot enable dampening and set that to true. So now when I let go, it still stops, but if you hold down, you're going to feel like the movement feels a bit different, doesn't it? Because it's based on how quickly you drag up and down. It's going to go faster or slower. So it's based on, on physics. Okay. So we let go and it stops. So that's unfortunate, but it's a super simple fix. Um, what we can do is go here to our loop and just do controls .update. All right, that's gonna make sure it keeps on going even after we let go. So now if I just release, look at that, boof, it keeps animating. Amazing, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, one more thing I wanna do is maybe change the speed of this a bit, perhaps. There's loads you can do. Um, and I also want to disable panning. If you hold down right click, you can drag up and down like that and you can zoom in and out. I want to disable those. I, I don't care about those. Controls dot enable pan. Let's set that to false because it's going to be a website and I don't want people to be able to zoom in and then cover up my nav and everything else. So let's disable the pan and let's disable the zoom as well. So enable zoom and set that to false. So now if I scroll, nothing's working. That's perfect. I can still rotate it around controls. I can still rotate it, but I cannot zoom and I cannot pan. So perfect. All right. That's good. I can also add an auto rotation to this if I want to. This is optional, but you can do controls dot auto rotate and set that to true. And look at that. It's going to start spinning on its own. I can also change the speed of this. If I want controls dot auto rotate speed, I think the default is like two or one. Let's set this to five and that looks good. I can still move it. So that's cool, but it keeps on going by itself, which I really like. All right, look at that. That's such a cool effect. Now you might be able to still kind of see pixels around it. If I zoom in like that, maybe you can see uh, if it's a bit distracting, then what you can do is just increase the pixel ratio. So it's going to be much nicer around the edges, especially. So all you need to do is go to your renderer and say render dot set pixel ratio and add two here. All right, default is one. So now if I hit save, you're gonna see that it's much smoother around the edges. All right, and that's, I mean, that's pretty much all nice and dandy here. Uh, we can start adding our HTML, CSS, and we're gonna leave the color changing to the end. So let's head over to our index HTML and we are gonna go, let's go here. And we're going to say we have our canvas and below it, let's do a nav bar where the a tag, we're going to have a href sphere and then the UL with an LI saying explore. And let's do one saying create. Cool. Hit save. And then just below the nav, let's say we have another section. I'll just add a H one here, uh, saying title like that. Give it a spin. Cool. So let's style this up a bit now. Let's head over here. Uh, I'm also going to add a font. I'm going to do Poppins. So I'll just paste that here. 
You can get this off Google Fonts if you wish. And then all I'm gonna do is just add a font family of poppins. Okay, let's get this WebGL. I'm gonna add a position absolute to this with top zero, left zero, and Z index of one. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna put the nav on top of it. So we can grab the nav and say color white so we can see it, but it's still hidden. So we need to add a Z index of two, so it's above our canvas and add a position relative to it so we can see it. And there we go, and that's what we have. Let's add a bit of padding for um, a trim and a display of flex with a justify content of space between to put it on each side. That looks pretty cool to me. Let's fix up the sphere. We're gonna say nav A. We're gonna get rid of that text decoration, that line underneath there, like that. We also wanna make sure the color is white on this one. And let's add a font weight of bold, just so it looks a bit extra nice. The nav UL, let's grab the UL. I wanna get rid of those dots so we can just do a list style of get the fuck out. And then a display flex, all right, to put them side by side. And then a gap of very wide. We can do four rem there. And that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And next up for the H1, we are pretty much gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do title and we're gonna do a color of white and a Z index of two. And I'm gonna do a position absolute on this. There it is. Z font size of three rem, nice and big. And I'm gonna put it left 50% and right, sorry, top 25% like that. And I'm gonna transform, translate it by minus 50% and minus 25%. And now it's perfectly centered right there. If you wanna move it down, move it down. Do 75, maybe you want it there, 75. Up to you. Jeez. <coughs> oh, All right. Cool. What else do we need to do? I think that's all the CSS, so we can get out of here. And how do we animate this? Well, we can do GSAP. So let's just go, where should we go? Down here, all the way at the bottom. This code is, by the way, um, you, you could like modularize this a bit more. I'm just, I'm just going and trying to cover everything at the same time. But in the future, we're gonna split it up into different files. So let's do some timeline magic. Um, we say gsap.timeline, all right? This allows us to essentially synchronize multiple animations together. So what I'm gonna do is add an object here and say defaults. And I can specify like a default duration for all my animations. In this case, it's gonna be a second. Cool. And now, I can say TL from two. So I wanna animate something from a position to another. So what do I wanna animate? I wanna animate the mesh scale, all right? So I can grab the actual sphere, the mesh, and that's what we called it. And I wanna change the scale of it. So I wanted to go from Z zero, x0 and y0, all right? These are the different coordinates, x, y, and z. So this is the from and then comma, and here is the two. So two, one, x1 and y1, and hit save. Okay, does it work? It don't work. Why don't you work? Let's see, error, we have an error. GSAP is not defined. Okay, cool. That's probably why. So let's go back here. And up at the top, we're gonna say imports, GSAP from GSAP, that should work. And there we go, look at that. Wow, cool. So why am I doing X, Y, and Z? Well, if I only do, if 
I keep one of these at zero, you're gonna see, let me just do 0 0.3. Look at that, you're gonna get that weird shape, right? Because we're, we wanna make sure we're scaling all the axes at the same time. All right, cool. So we have that going, that's cool. Next up, what I want is for the nav to come down. So all I can do is do from two again, we're gonna grab the nav and I want to move it from a Y of minus 100% to comma Y 0%. So essentially we're just taking this and pushing it up off the screen and this comes in and then that comes down. See, so we're orchestrating it with the timeline. So it's really cool. And finally we can do TL from two, I don't know, we can grab the title and we can do just like an opacity to it from zero to opacity one, and that should be good. And there we go, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's do the damn colors, right? All right, so just really quickly, uh, let's go down here, mouse animation color, cool. So what we're gonna do first of all is I only wanna change the color when my mouse is down and I'm dragging, all right? I don't want it to change color whilst I'm just hovering over like that. So I'm gonna have a variable here called mouse down and by default, that's gonna be false, all right? And then I'm gonna add two event listeners here. Event listener on mouse down I'm gonna run a little function here. Basically, when my mouse is down, I'm holding down, I want the mouse down variable to be turned to true, all right? So if I'm holding down, it's true. But when I let go, I want it to go back to false. So I can just copy this over and say mouse up, set this to false. And that's it. So now that functionality is all hooked up. And finally, what we can do now is say window add event listener on mouse move. I'm gonna add an event in there and I can just check if mouse is down, then I can run my functionality in here. So only when the mouse is down, the color of the sphere is gonna change. Okay, so what do we do? Well, I'm gonna go here and make another variable. We're gonna call this RGB. It's gonna be an array, an array, okay? An empty array. And basically RGB is three values. So you have your red, green, and blue, right? And they all go from zero to 255. So that's the range, all right? So what we can do is do a little magic here. We can say RGB equal to, I'm gonna open up this array like that. And I'm just gonna say mapped around and I'm gonna take the event page X, all right? So where I am on the page, where my cursor is on the page, and divide that by sizes the width times 255, all right? And this is gonna give me a value now uh, between zero and 255 when I move my mouse across horizontally like this on the X axis. So this is gonna be zero and this is gonna be 255. All right, I can show you that. So let's do a console log RGB, okay? Let's make this bigger, F12, refresh. And if I hold down, look at that, zero all the way to 255. So essentially I wanna do the same thing, but with, uh, with the Y. So here, just add a comma, and I'm gonna copy this over again. I'm just gonna do page Y and sizes height, and hit save. And for the last one, now there's no way for us to really do the depth, so I'm just gonna add a default 150 here for the for the blue and we're just gonna keep it like that. So we're gonna get like four different ranges of colors, but that's still pretty good. Okay, cool. So now I have this RGB going here, which is pretty good. Um, 
Okay, so how do we make this work? We're still in this if mouse down function here. Let's animate. Um, what we're gonna do is say gsap2, we're gonna get the mesh, and we wanna go on the material, and we wanna update the color. All right, comma, and in here we can specify the RGB values, so R, G, M, B. So here I can just pass for the red. I can do, now you think you'd be able to do RGB zero like that, right, from this array and just pass it in like that. It's not gonna work, I don't know why. It must be like a tree JS thing. So what you need to do is up here, right above it, I'm gonna make a new variable called new color and set that equal to new tree dot color. And in here is where I'm gonna pass in this RGB. So let's just get rid of this for now. Just clean that up. Um, and here, what we're gonna do is say backticks RGB dollar sign curly brackets RGB dot join by the comma like that. So essentially, the way this looks like is this. So this is what we're passing in here. New tree dot color RGB zero. 100, 150, all right, so that's what we're passing in. We're just interpolating it like that. Um, so now if you do that, then it works. So now you can just add a comma here and say curly brackets, R is gonna be new color, dot R. And then G is gonna be new color, dot G. And finally, B is gonna be new color dot B. That seems to work. I think it needs like this object, this tree object to actually work. You're gonna just pass in random numbers to the material. But let's see, look at that. If I hold it down, look at that. We're getting this cool color change. How nice is that? I love it. And there we go, that's it. Um, I guess maybe we could like turn on the intensity a bit on the light. Let's let's find our light. Here we go. We can do light dot intensity. Let's do 1.25. The default is one. So there we go. Pretty cool. Oh, let's also do the roughness on the material because we only did color. So check this out. If I do a roughness of 0.2 it's gonna be very shiny, right? Kind of like a bowling ball. So you can get that effect if you want. And I think it looks quite cool if we go up here like that to the edges, you get this nice kind of horizon line there going. Um, I think I did mine 0.5-ish. So you still have a bit of reflection there. And then you get this cool effect when you go to the edges, which I really like. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you want to see more TreeJS related content and I'll gladly film a couple for you. Uh, we can get more comp comp complex with it. We can get into doing Blender stuff and yeah, create like one of those amazing ones like the Bruno Simons car one. If you don't know which one it is, it's, I'll put it up here. So yeah, until next time, take care, bye-bye, subscribe and bye.